Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome back to DAS, Digital Assets Show, the Internet Money Podcast. <laughs> it's a brand new episode, episode two, the show that takes you on an exhilarating ride of the ever fast-paced digital asset landscape, blockchain technology, and the world of cryptocurrencies. I am your host, Olu Washegun, or Olu, like my Yankee friends call me, Lami Lami, back in the day. Hosu Alaji. <laughs> yes, and I live in Lagos, Nigeria. It's inflationary out here, but I love my city. What's up? You're welcome. Welcome, welcome. Today, I want to tell you about Bitcoin. It's very important. It's the first digital asset on top of the, boot, uh, on top of the food chain. Bitcoin, blockchain, food chain. You know, I love Bitcoin because in 2009, January 3rd, when Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder, it was basically invented by Satoshi Nakamoto. That's the name of the founder. Do your research. Uh, put out Bitcoin. A lot of us doubted it. A lot of us didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. You know, I thought it was like MMM and all those things. But later on, I got to... The rabbit hole and I found what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that cannot be censored, is permissionless, and it's borderless. It can go anywhere. No one person, organization, or government can stop Bitcoin. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, it's going to be more interesting. I'll drive you through the rabbit hole of Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin for me? Why Bitcoin for you? Bitcoin is trust, built on a trust platform, blockchain, a distributed ledger technology. Sit back. Don't go nowhere. All is right here. Let me take you on a crypto journey. Oh, yeah. Let's go. You're welcome back to Digital Asset Show, the internet podcast for money or the internet money podcast um we're going to be talking everything crypto blockchain but bitcoin on top of the food chain that's that's what i'm about because that's the truth so today we're going to be talking about bitcoin and how it is money but we can't define bitcoin without talking about money what is money money is a medium of exchange you can use money for value or services, or to obtain whatever it is that you want. If I give you this cup of drink and you accept it for two cows, then you believe that the content of this cup of drink has value as much as the cows that you're selling to me or you're giving to me in exchange. So money helps us obtain the things that we want and the things that we need. And it dated back to way back from the days when it wasn't paper money. It used to be calories. It was precious metals. Precious metals like gold are, are, are mostly the recent types of money. But, you know, the oldest history of money started from butter. Exchange of real value, you know? abstraction like seashells beads stones and of course more recently precious metals like gold silver you know and today plastic money you know what plastic money is now mastercard visa money <laughs> but it's 2023 about 14 years ago when the first cryptocurrency bitcoin in 2009 was put on the internet money changed forever completely from what it used to be to what it is now the internet of money the internet of money no more paper money online money real money if it's not real money it won't have a market cap of about $758 billion today. 
a young business of about 14 years. I'm just saying, if Bitcoin were to be a business, but Bitcoin is obviously not a business. It's a fact. It's not a meat. You know? So money is an illusion, an imaginary one, uh, one of the oldest technology ever to exist on earth. Money precedes writing. People have been exchanging values even before people started writing to each other. Money is that deep. You know, some type of spirituality is involved in money. And Bitcoin has come to completely show us what true money is. I'm taking you guys on a journey. Sit with me. Don't go nowhere. The internet of money, Bitcoin. I already told you about types of money. Those money were very, very useful in those days. They used carry to marry some people's parents. <laughs> Maybe my go my forefathers and, and, and mothers used to ball with calories. Like just imagine say then carry calories and they use it to come and ask for your sister in marriage. Carries. Seashells. Was money some time ago. Today, 2023, money has been decentralized, completely separated from the state. Bitcoin is money on the blockchain, secured with cryptography, and then open ledger, distributed ledger that you and I can verify for the first time in the history of the world. We can now verify the balances, the spendings, the amounts that is left of money. That's never happened before. No bank will open their books and show you as a customer how much you get for your account, how much I get. They won't even open their books for Dangote, except you're trying to invest in them, you know? But as a customer, using Bitcoin, as a user of Bitcoin, as an owner, as an owner of Bitcoin or SATs, the smaller units of Bitcoin, the units of account of Bitcoin, it's called SATs or Satoshi, S-A-T. Your stake is equal to the ones who have 100,000 Bitcoins, even if you have just 10 SATs. When Bitcoin distributes its profits, the profits that the banks don't distribute, right? It distributes its equality to everybody at the same time. How many of us, they collect something from the bank today? How many times after your bank giving you, hey, you've kept this money here for so long, it won't go through any deductibles, and we're even adding more money. <laughs> Obviously, you know, so that money goes on, you know. So don't let me derail. Let's, let's stay on it. Why Bitcoin? Today, inflation in Nigeria is about 28%. I think that's what MBS said, uh, we, or maybe CBN. <laughs> so if you earn, like, minimum wage, 30000 which they will start paying better by next year, April 2024, 28,000, 28% is already out of your, your, your 30,000. 28% month on month inflation is already out of your 20,000. The goods and services that you're buying is already hurt. So the energy you're expending to work when you get paid eventually amounts to nothing. Bitcoin is everything that process is not. It is designed in a deflationary manner, while fiat paper money is designed to be inflationary. I didn't come here to, you know, tell you stories. I came here to take you on a journey. It's very, very important, and I want everybody to pay attention from the regulators to the everyday people, builders, developers, content writers, to Bitcoin company owners, to blockchain ecosystem, to Web3. We are moving from institutional money, institutional money, to people's network money. Money used to be centralized, right? Paper money, Naira, dollar, pounds, centralized the first time in history that you and I can have money that cannot be debased, that cannot be censored, is now. 
Bitcoin. The first time that you have money that is truly borderless. Cross-border, easy. Cannot be sanctioned. And no government can actually seize or fight Bitcoin anyway. Rather, the government should actually find a way to acquire Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not paper money in any way. Cryptocurrencies, most of them are like Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin is the first crypto. But, you know, the trust technology behind Bitcoin, blockchain, is what is making the network grow in network. Never before have we seen currency have this much trust. Yes, do you trust Naira? Do you even trust the US dollar? The Naira with my account, you know plenty. I know they like keep on for there. Because besides deductibles, here is the bank we eat. I feel they take excess deductions. Yes, you pay for everything, VAT, stamp duty. It's okay. But I don't make no money when I keep money in the bank. You feel me? But if I store my energy, all the hustle of my Monday to Sunday, weekly, monthly, in Bitcoin, the growth trajectory is up. Yes, people talk about volatility. Is Naira not volatile? Money in itself is volatile because it's centralized. You know? <laughs> yes. If Naira is volatile today, go like this, tomorrow go like this. The Naira we have in the bank as Nigerians, is it going like this? Or is it like this? <laughs> If you need more Naira, you better buy Bitcoin. Take it seriously. Money has changed completely. For the first time in the history of the world, you and I, from the corners of our house, we can actually own money that is a network of payment and also an asset, at the same time a reserve currency. My Naira now, if I want to send money to... Yankee, or I want to pay for a course, or you want to pay, pay uh, uh, for something that is cross-border. You know how you're hurt, right? You, you can't even spend more than $20, $30 on your Naira MasterCard. You have to go get a dollar card. We need money that can do most of the things for us. Money that has interoperability. Not money that is stagnant. And today, I am very, very happy that we have Bitcoin, money that can liberate us, money that is truly permissionless. Children will own their own banks. It has never happened in the history of the world. Today, with Naira Dollar Pound, you cannot set up a money business. You will go through all sorts of blockers and compliances. Compliance is good, very, very important to mitigate against, against risk, fraud, money laundry, etc. But the internet of money permits everyone for the first time, just like the internet permits you and I to connect, unstoppable. Imagine the government have power over the world's internet. Just imagine one entity can actually shut down the world's internet. <laughs> like government of nations, <laughs> I've shut down internet multiple times. Yeah. And they can shut down your money. Some time ago in Nigeria here, our money was shut down money multiple times. Over three weeks, people couldn't withdraw their money, their own money. I could not withdraw my own money. On a particular Tuesday around 12 noon. <laughs> banks were closed down, more than 14 banks. Lekki, Expressway, to Aja, even to phase one here. Bitcoin never shut down. But people think Bitcoin is just gamble, or maybe it is MMM. No, that's not what it is. It's a trust platform. Beyond money, trust, a platform whereby 
if you invest all the money that you make from Naira dollar pounds, like you put your money in the bank, right? When you hustle, you make money, you put it in the bank. What happens today as a Niger person? If you wanted to buy a laptop in January 2023, this is December 2023, December 2nd. Yeah, happy new month, everybody. Maybe it was 1.2 million when you wanted to buy it. Apple laptop or a nice Windows laptop. 20, between 24 to 25% inflation up to 28 today. If they tell you it's 25% or 27%, go and check. It's like 32 or 35. You and I know that price of everything have changed. If you want to buy a dozen of pure water in Nigeria today, how many will they give to you? Six, five, some places four. It depends on the area you're staying. Something that used to be like 18 bags, even 12 bags some months ago. So you work so hard, you take your money to the bank, your energy, and you store it there. What happens to your money? After some months, you want to buy a laptop. In December, the laptop price has gone up. That money has lost value. The banks don't shop inside multiple times while keeping your money. They send you SMS, all that maintenance, all those things. Bitcoin don't take it from you anyway. And I'm not against the banks. Don't get it twisted. I'm just trying to open your eyes to why crypto has come to stay. Bitcoin on top of the food chain, the first ever crypto that most cryptos are modeled after. Yeah, lots of the alt altcoin are doing fine, but 95 to 98% are not doing right. Most of them are scams. Giving, trying to give Bitcoin a bad name, but it's not possible. You really can't. If you take your time to study Bitcoin, you see that it is everything morning today is not. So it's very, very important that you understand how Bitcoin has come to exist, why you should buy Bitcoin, what will happen to your Bitcoin when you buy it, where to store the Bitcoin, how to store the Bitcoin, um, the difference between Bitcoin and paper money. You know, it's very, very important that you know all of these things, and that's the only way you won't fall for a scam. Um, we'll go for a quick short break. I have a guest in the house. We're going to be having some tete a tete about, about crypto, Bitcoin, blockchain. Uh, when I come back, I'll take you through on uh, some very important uh, things you need to know when you want to do cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, first of all, on top of the future. When you study Bitcoin, if you understand Bitcoin, you can go and you can go and try to double your hands into something else, which I won't advise you to, even though this is not financial advice, it's just my own facts, my own experience. You can come and debunk my myths if you think my information is um, uh, beneath yours. I am not a banker. I didn't learn about money growing up. Um, the pursuit of financial breakthrough opened my eyes to many things. Yeah. <laughs> When you hustle, 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 and you need to break through, you will go through the rabbit hole. Why am I making money and the money keep disappearing? Why do I invest and the investment keep losing value? What am I even buying? What stock am I buying that is really not doing well for me? What are the opportunities in front of me? Then you ask yourself, what is money? So let's go for a break. When we come back, we increase the tempo. Digital Asset Show, the Internet Money Podcast. Yes, yes, you're, you're welcome back to Digital Asset Show, Internet Money Podcast, and I have a guest in the studio. Bitcoin is not paper money. Um, he's a senior writer, staff writer. You write about business yeah. at The Cable. The Cable is a very popular online magazine, uh, like a very popular internet. If you're on X, from a Twitter, you will know yeah, about definitely. Cable. Yes, so... You write for the cable. He writes for the cable, and his name is Olalekon Fakoyejo. Please help me welcome Olalekon Fakoyejo. <laughs> yeah, Olalekon Fakoyejo. Ooh, yeah. What does it feel like being a writer? Oh uh, well, it's um, it's brain taxing, but it's also fun. You get to learn as you write. So beautiful, and you write about 
Yeah, I write Bitcoin. about um, what? I write about Bitcoin. I write about um, finance, the financial statements, stock markets. Um, yeah, stock markets. I do industry review of financial statements as well, and um, I also write generally about business activities. You know, and then of course policies, the government policies. So all that is what I'm into. Bit beautiful. Um, if you would define Bitcoin in your own terms. Um, okay. How would you explain Bitcoin to a toddler or to our okay. viewers? Well, I think I would say it's it's a payment, it's a it's a payment option and um, a wealth builder. Mm. That's just that's the simplest way I can. Wow, imagine. that's unique. A payment option and a wealth builder or a wealth builder. Yeah, wealth a wealth builder. builder. Yeah. Wow, that's lovely. Bitcoin will definitely build your wealth if you hold it for a long time. The growth trajectory is upwardness. Definitely, you have to take a position for a long term. But yes, that's absolutely. the only way you can actually, you know, benefit from benefit from it. Only Bitcoin, because it's, it's like a reserve currency. It helps mm -hmm. you protect your wealth, save your save energy that you expend yeah. to acquire this uh, money in the it's first fun. place. All right, beautiful. Uh, so, um, when you write about Bitcoin in mm -hmm. general. Uh, how is the feedback? Maybe before I jump into that, okay. what made you start writing about Bitcoin and how did you yourself discover Bitcoin? Okay, well, let me, from the last question, I actually discovered Bitcoin through um, conversation with my brother. Uh, he was actually talking to me about a friend of his who is into, he's a serial investor. Mm. So, but um, the guy was more into in, um, agri investment platform, investing in agri investment mm. platform. But we all know how volatile that you know that space is. So he <laughs> lost. He cast. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he basically lost. You know some of his um, investment in that um, channel. So, but I think later fiat, on, fiat investment. Yes, yeah, fiat investment definitely. Okay. So, but at the end of the day, he switched because, like I said, the serial invest. He just feel like. Once you lose, there's probably another option where he could, you know, probably make some money from as well. Mm -hmm. And that was where he started, you know, gradually investing in buying Satoshi and, you know, gradually he didn't buy Bitcoin like because it was, it was yeah. already Satoshis significant. are the smaller units of yeah, Bitcoin. The unit Bitcoin. of accounts for Bitcoin, for Bitcoin is in yes. SAT. Like you have Cobo for Naira, yes, cents for, yeah, dollar, for dollar, pence Cent, for pounds, yeah. Pasewa for CD, SAT. Or Satoshi in full yeah. for, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So basically, he started building it from there, just little by little, and he, I think that really helped him recuperate his um, recoup his losses from um, the agri business. So basically, it was like a gain, an extra gain for him, and that that was how he, you know, he abandoned every other options and just like focus on um, Bitcoin and focus on Bitcoin. Wow. So, that was why I started hearing about it. I started hearing about it. Although, you know, you'll be hearing some little drops, CBN releasing statement once, you know, I think just like once in a blue moon or telling you that, oh, beware of Bitcoin, beware of cryptocurrency. CBN will always do their thing. We'll their regulatory their thing. body, the apex body yeah, for the apex monetary body, yeah. policies yeah, and regulation. So, yeah. But it's always important to just like take a step further beyond what, you know, the government has said or what the CBN like, has said. Whenever the government tells you stuff, stuff yeah. especially they say, hey, don't go there. Um, if it's not going to kill you like you, instantly, you should try you should and just try and just see. Look yeah, and just see why. What is happening? What, there? what is actually happening? There? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because if you don't, you might actually lose a lot. Yes, you might actually lose a lot. And there are definitely people who are biting their hands right now, wishing that they probably took that step, you know, a long time ago. Yeah. So basically, you know, I was more into of what the CBN was saying or what the CBN said at the time. But when I started having conversation with my brother, he was just telling me about his friend. Okay. So the more he told me about The guy who, his, who, who recouped recoup his losses his, yeah, from the fiat-based fiat Greek yeah, business in, in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah. So basically, he, when he kept telling me about it, then I started, um, what was it called? Then I joined the company. So he became an advocate for Bitcoin. Yeah, that was I started writing and about you started Bitcoin. Because you saw his experience. Yeah, because I heard about his experience. So Wonderful. that was when I started, like, you know, I then I started writing it, then I started researching because what you don't oh, know, but you of just course you were already a writer, right? Yeah, I was already a writer. Wonderful. Yeah. So and of course you know you can't just jump into it without at least having the knowledge about it. So that was why I knew that it's actually Bitcoin has actually grown beyond what we thought, you know, the level we thought it was because of the individuals that were involved and the institutions that were also involved yes. at the time. So but we were seeing it as a 
as a, a group or community of just, you know, I don't want to use individuals, let me just say individuals that are not known. Yes. Whereas there are people who are investment gurus that are already deep neck into Corporation. It. There's going to be, whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. a Bitcoin ETF, most likely in 2024, yeah, exchange yeah, traded yes, funds. Yes. And there are big bucks, big money bags mm -hmm. in billions of dollars that are just waiting for that. Then, boom, it becomes, it becomes something, something else. else. You know, so, um, yeah, I like that angle uh, because you said it's not what we, we thought yeah, it, it, it was, yeah. like MMM. Yeah, yeah, MMM? yeah, 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 MMM. And I think that's also one thing that made some people scared again because yes. they feel like you're making money now, but you don't know how long, or you don't know maybe it's when you get into it. When people hear Bitcoin, that's what when comes to their head is it's a scam. It's a scam, definitely. Bitcoin is a scam. Ah, Fast money. Bitcoin, they go down, yeah. you know, but mm -hmm. they don't know Bitcoin. Really, Bitcoin don't go down. You know, um, I think when you buy Bitcoin, you mm. buy some binary numbers that don't move until that you spend it. it. You know, but in the fiat terms, because fiat is like this, it's always blinking eye. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's volatile. volatile the yeah. policies here and there, you know, whether it is Naira, dollar, pounds, wherever you are from, the mm -hmm. RAM, whether you're from the UAE or South African rand, mm -hmm. against Bitcoin, it's never stable. And because Bitcoin is everything, fiat is not. When you hold Bitcoin as an asset and you hold some fiat, yeah. you begin to realize that this Bitcoin, without touching it at all, is, is kind of evolving, is growing. Mm. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's, it's, it's actually evolving. So as a writer, did you ever get to that level of, wow, this technology is not just the ordinary. It has come to make a change, mm -hmm. create something different. It has come to most likely yeah. um, liberate people liberate financially. People. Did you get to that point? And, and if you ever, mm -hmm. how did you handle it? And what was your next writing concept like? Well, definitely there were times, I think that was in 2021, 2022, 2021, 2020, 2020, 2021. And I think that was during uh, the boom. pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic. And we that were very bullish. Period. Yeah, that was a bullish yes. period. So basically, when I started seeing how it was growing, then, you know, when I started seeing how it was growing, how Bitcoin was moving, then, you know, Bitcoin basically is like a decider for other, you know, other shit coins and all the stuff. <laughs> so once Billy. <laughs> guy, I like how they call shit coin. <laughs> so call once, uh, once, um, once it's, you know, it started moving up and, I started hearing about people that were involved, Elon Musk, you know, um, um, Jack Dorsey. Um, I think there's a man, a micro Elon strategy. Elon Musk is the, uh, um, the, the owner um, of X, Tesla, former Twitter, yeah, a former body from Twitter. Jack Dorsey, yeah. the owner, former yeah. owner of Twitter. Of Twitter as well. <laughs> then I think there was a man who, um, he owns micro strategy or something. Yeah, Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor, okay, yeah. So, so everybody should learn from Michael Saylor. Uh, Michael Saylor owns micro strategy like yeah. you rightly said and from here in nigeria sitting down i'm looking at the digitization of money yeah. and assets and i'm seeing the thing michael Saylor is doing yeah. for somebody who has invested in everything nasdaq s p 500 apple google yeah. maybe tesla i don't even know but you know and now and the see, entire yeah. strategy of his company is to invest, invest wholly in Bitcoin. It's something people must pay attention to. He keeps borrowing money and buying Bitcoin. Buying he bought about 16,000 something worth of Bitcoin even just when some it's days ago. Deep. And he's, I think he's bullish about it, even though... So even when bullish. bullish. Yeah. The poster man for Bitcoin, Michael Saylor. Yeah, he is. He's definitely a poster man. <laughs> yes, and that's what I think Nigerian billionaires, Nigerian governments, Nigerian people, young people should be looking at. Because don't listen to what they say. Watch mm. what they do. Yeah, true. Watch what they do. Watch what <laughs> that, they do. Definitely. You know, as a writer, you know that you can write to manipulate people's yes, hearts. Yes, right? yes, yes. But what you but do... What you do is what matters. Is yeah. what really matters. Yeah, yeah so um, let's go back to you. So, in your heart, what's the mm. difference between Bitcoin and other altcoins? Now, I realize that you discovered Bitcoin because of the impact in somebody's yeah, life. Like, so, yeah. you saw Bitcoin real life, firsthand, right? In your mind, there are over 20,000 other cryptocurrencies Crypto as a writer. Yes. You definitely come across them all the time. Mm -hmm. 
what's the differentiator between Bitcoin and these other altcoins? We call it shit coin. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's very obvious though because um, Bitcoin is like a first mover though. Like there's yeah. something they call in business that there's a, a first mover, mover advantage. Yeah, first okay. mover advantage. There is so more. that one is there. But aside from that, when it comes to what Bitcoin has actually the adoption, the adoption and um, should, the, yeah, the adoption of Bitcoin and the um, the impact it has because you want to it, it bitcoin gives more or less like a guarantee of some sort compared to others you're you're probably you know what taking your step gradually when it comes to other um cryptocurrency because you're not sure you only know the confidence that um people that i've mentioned earlier you know have shown towards bitcoin and when you compare it to the confidence they have shown towards others in fact it's not it's not doesn't exist at all there's no body coming out and telling you that oh there's this certain crypto that you have to like invest in and all that so basically to me i think when you look at number one the adoption rate yeah. number two you look at the um the scarcity of awesome. bitcoin the scarcity of bitcoin you know that that definitely gives the confidence of you know edging inflation and all the stuff but because if it's if it's everywhere it loses yeah, if value. It's every, yeah, definitely, it, it loses but if it's value. scarce like gold mm -hmm. You know, the thing about Bitcoin is it's very similar to gold. So that's yeah. why people call it digital gold. Yeah. That could be a topic for another day. Yeah, true. I love the fact that you said scarcity. You know, Bitcoin is very scarce. There are only 21 million of yeah, Bitcoin. Of we have more than like 8 billion people 8 billion. on Earth. How many of us, all the millionaires <laughs> cannot even have Bitcoin? Have there are more than, maybe like little over 52 yeah. millionaires on Earth. Oh, yeah. And we have 21 million. And my seller is already buying almost 200,000 mm. Bitcoins. <laughs> I know I'm definitely <laughs> aside from I think there are other people definitely to do who we don't know about, but definitely are making huge investment. The only luck we have is that he is more or less like a man who wants to show people that Bitcoin Yeah, is corporate actually, world yeah, Wall Street world, yeah. that look, this is the next big next thing. Big thing, exactly. The best next money. Next money, yes. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. I I love that. I love that. I love that. Thank you very much. Um real quick, uh, let's touch up on some headline news going around in the entire crypto space uh but i'll focus more on bitcoin so because i don't want you guys to derail right yes we'll talk about some other crypto uh but you might see me as a maxi bitcoin maxi even though it's a digital <laughs> asset show yes so, mm -hmm. but you know the truth because bitcoin is a trust platform yeah true. beyond like there's nothing we are hiding that's why it is on national tv now people go they wonder ah why is this guy discussing bitcoin that thing that is a scam on television but no it's not a scam it is already it in is our already, finance yeah, act in our yeah. laws Law, yeah. like the government wants to take 10 percent, but how will they take it that's a discussion for another, for day. another day you understand <laughs> so we have to start discussing yeah, this yeah because FRS, firs we start chasing you and i now you know that uh, you didn't pay your bitcoin you, didn't pay your, yeah, you do you understand true. and they will they will go online and start chasing you hey Stop spending Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Basically, because at the end of the day, you even before you start, you know, like you start charging that, you definitely have to take steps. Yes. The government only the government has seen the benefits. They've seen that it's and you know this is a period where the government is trying to increase revenue. Absolutely. So definitely mm -hmm. it's almost like a they see the bag, extra, they see the yeah. bag moving in and out of BTC. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So quick one, uh Bitcoin price bitcoin don't they say some people call it trading but i don't see it as trading i see it as bitcoin price bitcoin will be stocks where they trade yes <laughs> you can see the dollar the pounds naira rates vol volatile but anyway yeah i just want to give you what bitcoin price is the time today is 26 minutes to 7 p.m. Lagos, Nigerian time, and Bitcoin price is 38,779 US dollars, standing at a market cap of 758.491 billion US dollars, bigger than all the companies in Nigeria, <laughs> bigger mm. than all the banks. Mm. No cap. Bitcoin is bigger than all the banks. Chief Tony Lumelu's bank, where does that? Herbert Ugwe's bank, and that's UBA and Axis mm -hmm. Bank, respectively. Shegun Agbaje's bank, GTB. All the banks in Nigeria, Bitcoin is bigger than all of them. I think even in market cap, 14 years 14 old. And years. most of these banks are even 
older than older Bitcoin. Older than that, yes. You know? So why, why do you think that's happening? Because you mentioned adoption. That's why I went, I went to that. Mm -hmm. It's $38,000. It's not like everybody own one Bitcoin. Own one Bitcoin, But yes. people have SATs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the adoption must be really growing because how can the market cap be so, so big and worldwide? You have to understand, even with the CBN restriction, the, the adoption in Nigeria still continues. The only difference is that it slows the, you know, the growth rate, mm -hmm. but it did not stop the adoption. Because I think Nigeria is still, was not about, a report came out earlier this year, I think that said that Nigeria, at least, is still the, I, when it comes to adoption rates, Nigeria still leads, you know, the pack. So basically, yeah, it's, in Africa, we are number mm. one. In, in the world, we are like top three, four, and five, think, six, yeah, seven. We know, whenever there's any way for Nigerians can make money, <laughs> <laughs> definitely you have to, you yeah. see a Nigerian there. Whenever, wherever you can make money, you see a Nigerian there. Definitely. Absolutely. So for me, I think that it's just um, an opportunity for the youth because there's a lot of restriction when it comes to um, the financial system itself, like the fiat financial system. Now, mm. There's a restriction, but... Um, crypto almost gives like a freedom to you know to get involved yes you are you don't have to do a lot it of does give, it does give you freedom to freedom get, to, get yeah, involved definitely. yes Co so it, because of the decentralized nature yeah, the decentralized of bitcoin nature of the, yes, semi definitely. decentralized maybe semi center centralized <laughs> even the uh, of even the altcoin system even though they said the anonymous as well the anonymous um the you know giving the privacy the sense of privacy as well so i think all that gives it an advantage because imagine someone without me like you said bitcoin actually like cross border trading or should i say oh without me having a bank account you know mm. some people were able to like peer to, you mentioned earlier in the peer show peer. peer to peer and all that which is what is actually leading, you know, Bitcoin transactions now. So I think all these things give you an advantage because you don't, some people don't want, although when you look at it really, it's not as if Bitcoin transaction is really, you know, eating because there are it's traces not. of data. There are data that... And that's why when you said anon anonymous, I, I was listen, listening to you. Yeah. I wanted to see how you're going to land. And I'm, I'm oh, okay. glad you landed with hidden it's good yes, you're a writer yes. you just build our yeah. interest and then you come to <laughs> the facts come to the fact, it's yeah. pseudonymous it's mm -hmm. really not hidden it's hidden, not anonymous. Yeah, yeah, it's and not to everybody hidden. ah bitcoin you can't see bitcoin if you want to rob if you want to steal you want to do fraud, that's just early days early days um yeah marketing the strategy ux is better something. now but really besides even yeah market marketing yeah, strategy, strategy but, yeah. pff, the ux is better now for people to understand how bitcoin works mm -hmm. but the ledger system, system. doesn't really change doesn't, yeah, definitely. you know it's a blockchain yeah it's transparent mm -hmm. i can see everything inside all the wallets of everybody yeah. on earth because if it's anonymous how are they catching all those that are using it for you know how are they you know getting them Even are they mining pools now return bitcoin mining fees that are larger than the ordinary recently i think and pool returned about 83 bitcoin or they they have agreed to return it, it's so interesting that it's a platform for truth it's not a platform to, lose, to money. lose money mm -hmm. once you learn about bitcoin and you understand that as a nation as an individual it's mm -hmm. very very important like land and house mm -hmm. you before you buy a house you go go learn yeah, where the, the, area, the area the, the paperwork and all of that that's how you should Think about Bitcoin. If you think it's volatile, volatility is vitality in BTC. Mm. So you will be losing out if you're not paying Even attention. Naira is volatile. <laughs> Naira is very volatile, so, but Naira's volatility. <laughs> I'm a Nigerian. I'm not spoiling my country. I'm yeah. saying this so we can all come together. Yeah, it's open, you know, it's open, Naira's volatility it's is. It's a downward trend, so there's nothing <laughs> like... No, it's open. It's out there. Yesterday, yeah. it still feel like 11%. So Yeah, it's, it's open. open. It's out there. It's out I there, love that. So, so no, I shouldn't be conscious, right? Yeah, there's no... <laughs> I don't want NBC <laughs> chasing <laughs> after me. <laughs> there's no need to be conscious about that because definitely it's something that everyone knows. And yes, the fact is out there. So, fact. so yeah, the, the volatility in Bitcoin is vitality. I, I, love, I love that. Um, I wanted to give top stories. Okay. Some things happening around now... You know, it's no longer news that Binance, the biggest mm -hmm. cryptocurrency exchange in the world, their CEO is going through some, you know, uh, backlash now in the media, yeah, in the media. Uh, because of, you know, some compliance issue in the US. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he's supposed to pay uh, 4.3 billion, 4 .3 billion, billion US dollars. dollars. 
Nigerian SEC go to look and say see game. Wow. Wow. That Imagine if it, if they were they already started regulating and someone was involved in that. That was understand? huge. Yeah, yeah. So they, so the government should be seeing it as numbers, not to stifle innovation. Not to stifle. Like, yeah, definitely, okay, definitely. There's an opportunity yeah. here. Yeah. Look at what the US is doing to Binance. I don't hate Binance. So CZ, mm -hmm. the founder of Binance, used to follow me. The only beef I have with him is he unfollowed me after I started talking about Binance, blah, blah, blah. Maybe oh, intentionally okay. or not. I don't know. But he followed me for some weeks. And then, you know, um, I, li I like what CZ has contributed to the ecosystem. That's the CEO of yeah, the Binance CEO, yeah. because of Bitcoin, what he has done for, you know, for the ecosystem. But the fact that they, they sell other... Um, tokens and okay. cryptocurrencies that have hurt people because of the scam okay. behind them i disagree with him in that area you mm -hmm. know so but nigerian sec should have done smarter and this is not me talking down on the company mm -hmm. by instead of announcing oh binance is not registered in nigeria you yeah. should not trade with them you know they did that yeah, back yeah. to back but like i think a few that times. i think he also came out to say that that was, was not um, no 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 he, he actually said it was right they were not they're not a registered entity yeah, he in said, Nigeria. Yeah, he said and the SEC yeah. said that instead of the SEC bringing them close yeah, and saying, look, you already have millions of Nigerians on your platform and have discussions with mm -hmm. them. You know, now look at the revenue that our SEC would have made. Mm -hmm. US is extracting it from buying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the SEC it's actually crazy. wanted to like, you know, take, you know, the right step towards um crypto though. Yeah. But I think it's a decision that the see because there was a time they made um, a statement that um exchanges who I think there was a there was an S E M S E C rule they made then that anyone registered under it the, the company would be allowed to, you know, open a bank, use a bank account. They even have a virtual assets service provider um, license. Oh, the, um, one of the top shutters at the mm. SEC, now the MD of Nigerian Capital Market, Mr. Market. Timmy Ogama. Okay. I learned so much from some of the things he put together. They put, there was... There was a time I heard about the virtual asset service provider license. I heard it was a hundred million or something. I was mm. invited for some of the meetings, um, which would have really uh, accelerated adoption Indeed. because yeah. cryptocurrency companies, Bitcoin companies, would now have the legitimacy to actually, yeah. you know, to operate, trade to openly, trade. Yeah, operate openly. openly, and you know, onboard people, mm -hmm. and 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 that way, you know, yeah, compliance here and there would have happened, you know, but it's also a blessing because it's an opportunity to expose people to the freedom that Bitcoin truly gives really? because I'm going to be a truth sayer. I won't say yes, I'm against compliance. Mm. No, I'm for compliance, but I have to tell the truth. Bitcoin actually. is truly decentral de decentralized. Mm. Like, <laughs> if you know how to keep your Bitcoin, no, no compliance no can compliance hold you can hold because you. it's true decentralization, even for the compliance guys. Mm -hmm. You know, not your keys, not your coins. Bitcoin on exchanges. It's mine. <laughs> it's, it, not it's not yours. It's for the exchange. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want an exchange. Bought me cash. Mm -hmm. You know, we're building and we're going to be relaunching proper soon. So stay mm -hmm. tuned, everybody. But I'm, I'm just going to say the truth. Mm -hmm. So in that area, um, I think those are where the fears come yes, from for the yes. government. They kind of panic knowing what Bitcoin is, yes. everything against what CBN is. But right now, it, shouldn't they be finding a way to adopt this even at the federal government level for Nigeria? Let's, mm. let's even be about our country. Yeah. You know, for me, it's about the ecosystem and it's about my country. Bitcoin is truly borderless. You borderless. can't stop you can't, the transaction. Definitely. Naira, you were talking about it the other time. If I want to send money to the US, mm. Now, Wahala, serious Wahala right now, right? I hope they ease it. We have a new central bank governor, Kadoso. Shout out to the top man. <laughs> you know what Nigerian people go through. Even the geek that wants to receive payments by just designing by graphics just design, yes. or doing some UI UX work as a software developer, front end, back end, you want to get paid. Now, Wahala, if it's not Western Union, then you have to go through some of these apps, you know. And all of that, but Bitcoin don't care. You know, no closing time. No, cl de <laughs> definitely no closing time. Monday to Sunday, you can get your, you can get your. And, and I don't, I actually do not know why they do not see these benefits like you've listed because they are actually benefit. But I just think that sometimes 
you know, I think innovations outgrow, or should I say, outpace, you know, government, you know. Um, they say technology is always ahead of innovation. It's always innovation. ahead of innovation, or should I say, always ahead of regulation. Yes. Innovation is always ahead of regulation. Tech innovation, technology is always ahead yes, of, of, of regulation, regulation, actually. Yeah. Regulation comes after. Comes after. Yes. So I just think that in Nigeria's case, they just have this sense of fear then. The rapid growth at the time when the way people were because you can't wake up you woke up okay you went to bed yesterday you heard that okay bitcoin was around 20 something thousand dollars then the next day you wake up and you realize that <laughs> it has gone beyond like over like 10 or 20 or 50 percent due to the adoption that due to the adoption so the question that's why you start saying oh how are you getting this money because they feel like it's easy money so it's that's not easy the, money. You're working hard. You're just smart because for you to invest in Bitcoin and, and, and be patient enough to reap the profits, yeah, you the must profit, immerse yeah. yourself in a rabbit hole and don't see it as ah, Bitcoin opportunity to convert to cash. Yeah, yes, to it cash. is. Yeah. It's a network. It's a mm -hmm. finance settlement layer for payment, mm -hmm. but it's more of a it reserve more, currency, yeah, currency. Yeah, more of an more. asset like land. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I'm telling people about Bitcoin, they don't understand that it's one of the ways our government can use to liberate to poverty because forward. this is true money that can and actually it, help people and it also helps with based on what you said now basically it helps with um, financial inclusion and they've 100%. been struggling on you know they improving can't, financial they can't inclusion attain, even if they think they are i mean 100 percent financial inclusion is nothing if you can't do cross-border yeah, yeah, yeah. efficiently yeah. I don't know if you understand. Yeah, I understand. Like, you're excluding me financially if I have to deal with SWIFT. SWIFT, Look yeah. at what happened in Russia. They took Russia off SWIFT off and their Swift. rubles went down. Hmm. And they started waking up to crypto. You know, look at what happened in Ukraine. Everything shut down in their company. If it wasn't for Bitcoin, how would their country survive the so war? Right. They started taking public donations. I sent money to Ukraine without having anything to do with the co country. Okay, yeah, I had some friends, some software developers <laughs> there. But you, you feel me? Yeah, I understand. So it liberates you from from oppression, from everything, and SARS. We saw the impact. I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to so bring back, awake. you know, <laughs> we are awake anything, yeah. but we have to talk about it. If it wasn't for Bitcoin during NSAS, that activity wouldn't have lasted that long. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about this, shout out to the people that put that together. Even, you know, we were a part of it from behind, not against the government, but the engineering of how Bitcoin can actually be uh, um, used for a good yes, cause. So governments should see NSAS as a good cause eventually. And, and, and they should go back and revisit how NSAS was powered by Bitcoin and see how Nigeria can actually protect itself from censorship as a nation. Mm -hmm. And we can empower ourselves as a country with mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Just imagine a country like maybe the U.S. or or one of our big partners say, you know what, you will not be able to do cross-border transaction again because we told you to do this particular thing. Like our country is anti-LGBTQ, mm -hmm. openly at the government laws level. Love. You feel me? And then, this is not me going against that, but, but and then they say, oh, because you, you don't want to follow, you know, some, some, some people advocate for that at the government level in the U.S. You feel me? Some president do, like President Barack Obama, but maybe Trump don't. The Trump is not the president. Mm. President Barack Obama's party with Joe He's the one he is. advocates for that. They, they change up for Nigeria today and say, <laughs> you will not be able to do transactions. How, how are we going to move our business all over the world? BRICS has not even settled down. So what currency are we going to use to be borderless, to move transactions in billions of dollars in a, in, in a, in, in a permissionless way? In a permissionless way, yeah. Bitcoin. All right. Thank you very much for coming, my brother. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's really been a like nice time. We don't have time. We would have spoken a lot. The I mean, one hour goes so fast. Yeah, when you, you know, have a lot to say. Yes, when you have a lot. I would like to have you back at the show. Um, mm -hmm. But I would like to say to the viewers, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was it was a free flow episode. I When we come back next week, I will mass you guys into more. Um, learn about Bitcoin. D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. Make sure you find yourself in a rabbit hole of money understand why you need to increase your naira by buying assets that does not um lose value in the long run so stick with me same time next week i remain your humble host olu shout out to pop central shout out to all of my producers i mean my main producer and all the people behind the camera uh i'll see you when i come back next week the digital asset show remains your internet podcast for everything about money your internet money podcast <laughs>